Today's video is gonna be all about defining some very basic hi-fi and home theater terms because I do think that it's important to kind of have a base layer of knowledge before jumping into the weeds with respect to this hobby. Hi, my name is Andrew Robinson. I'm a recovering audiophile. And if this is your first time to my channel, I would just like to say welcome. Welcome to the place where we talk about hi-fi, home theater, music, art, and design. But if you're one of my subscribers, you already knew that already. So welcome back and how are you? Like I said, today's video is all about going over some basic terms. Whether you're into hi-fi or home theater, you need to know the difference between, say, an amplifier and an integrated amplifier and when separates or an AV receiver may be right for you. So let's get into it. This episode is all about hi-fi and home theater education, and it's also sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of creatives and even non-creatives can come together to learn new skills. With thousands of inspiring classes on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more, Skillshare has online classes to help take your creativity to that next level and to keep you inspired. I'm always down to up my audio game, so I am actually checking out Recording Vocals Like a Pro, Nail Recording Techniques and Acoustics by Rob M. Or maybe you're just wanting to learn how to add a little bit of interior design to your listening space, or maybe just learn how to cook a really nice meal before sitting down and watching a movie. There are classes for all of that on Skillshare, and I highly recommend you go check them out. And it's affordable. An annual subscription to Skillshare breaks down to a little bit less than $10 a month. And the first 1,000 people that click the link down in the description below will receive a two-month trial of the premium membership so that you can go and explore your creativity on Skillshare. And before we get back to the episode, I do want to just say one more thank you to Skillshare for helping us out and sponsoring this episode. So the first thing that we're gonna cover is source component. Now, it's important to know the difference between digital and analog source components. A source component is any device that plays back either your physical media or streaming media. So a CD player, DVD player, Blu-ray player, and streaming media player, those are all digital source components. But your turntable, your reel-to-reel, -reel, or maybe even your tape deck, those are analog source component. So whenever you hear the term source component, that is what people are talking about. The next thing we're going to briefly go over is DACs or digital to analog converters. Now these are specialty components because most digital source components like a CD player or DVD Blu-ray player have DACs built in. And all a DAC does is take a digital signal, a digital sound signal, and convert it into the analog realm. And so a CD player is obviously a digital source component. And on the back of most CD players, you will find RCA or analog outs, the red and the white. But on some CD players, you may find a coaxial or optical output. This is the output you would use to go to an outboard DAC. Why would you want an outboard DAC? Well, like anything in hi-fi, there are such things as components that specialize in one avenue of their performance and having a separate DAC is a way to ensure that you are getting the best digital to analog conversion, but they are definitely not required in a hi-fi system. But if you wanna to go to that nth degree, you can get your very own separate outboard DAC and put it between your source component, your digital source component, and say your preamp or processor. Next up are power amplifiers or amplifiers, depending on who you talk to. And an amplifier is just a device that drives your loudspeakers. And amplifiers come in a variety of different shapes and sizes and configurations, all from single channel, a channel in this instance referring to speaker or number of speakers. So you, if you have a mono amplifier, it powers one speaker. If you have a stereo amplifier, it powers two speakers. If you have a multi-channel amplifier, it powers multiple speakers. And that's all an amplifier does. It drives or powers your loudspeakers. Preamplifiers are exactly what their name sounds. They are the device that sits before or pre the amplifier. And a preamplifier is, well, how do I put it? It's kind of a really fancy switch with a volume control in that it switches between all of your various source components and allows you to control the volume of each using, well, a volume knob. And that really is what a preamp does. It takes all of your source components, 
you plug them into one central device, you can control which device you're listening to at any one time, control its volume, and then it sends that signal out to be amplified by your amplifier, which then drives your speakers. So that's what a preamp is. And preamplifiers, amplifiers, and source components are all part of what are known as a separate system. That is, you have a separate component for each job in a hi-fi or home theater system. And if you're wondering why would anyone want so many separate components? Well, it's just like anything in kind of enthusiast circles, which is you want separate components to maximize the potential for performance in their particular area. So you don't want just any source component. You want a source component that is the best at being a CD player, just as you would want a source component that is the best at being a Blu-ray player. And a preamp that is the best at being a preamp and an amplifier that is the best at powering loudspeakers. This is what is known as a separate system. Now an integrated amplifier is, well, it is the integration between a preamp and an amplifier in one single chassis. This obviously cuts down on the number of boxes that you need, it cuts down on cables, and it simplifies things dramatically. Now you can connect source components directly into an integrated amplifier for kind of a two or three box solution. But again, an integrated amplifier is nothing more than a preamp and an amplifier in one chassis. Getting away from hi-fi for just a moment, we're gonna turn our attention to home theater because there are such things as AV receivers, just as there are AV preamps and AV or multi-channel amplifiers. So starting with AV receivers. AV receivers are kind of do everything integrated amplifiers for home theater use. And when I say do everything, I do mean do everything as most modern AV receivers nowadays not only process and pass through video, they also process and pass through audio. They can connect to your internet Wi-Fi network and stream music directly, as well as power up to who knows however many speakers, depending on the type of setup that you have. And this is why AV receivers continue to be popular among home theater enthusiasts because they really do simplify your equipment rack and do a lot of multiple jobs in a single chassis, which is why for first time home theater enthusiasts, I highly, highly recommend people look at AV receivers as a solution to their home theater problem. An AV preamp is nothing more than a preamp, but for home theater. That is, it has support for multiple channels. You can connect a multi-channel amplifier to an AV preamp and thus power a multi-channel home theater system. Now, a lot of AV preamps can also accept, switch between, or pass through video signals, as well as decode high resolution or multi-channel audio streams, such as Dolby Digital, DTS, Atmos, things like that. But again, it's an AV preamp is just the preamp section, meaning you will need a separate multi-channel amplifier to connect to in order to drive your home theater speakers. So like I said earlier in this video, speakers are often referred to as channels. And so in home theater, channels are very important because it denotes the number of speakers present in your room. And so if you hear someone say that they have a two channel system, that is two speakers, if they have a three channel system, that typically means that they have a left center right speaker in the front of their room. And if they have a five or seven channel speaker system, that means that there are five or seven speakers present in their room. Most Dolby five channel systems have a left center and right channel as well as a right and left uh, surround sound channel. And that is a five speaker system. Now the point one in a five point one or five dot one speaker system, the dot one or point one refers to the number of subwoofers present. So if you ever hear anyone say that they have a two dot one, a three dot one or five dot one system, that merely means that they have two, three or five speakers with one subwoofer. And that is very common in how people describe their home theater speaker systems. Since Dolby Digital, there have been multiple flavors of Dolby Digital, just adding more discrete or independent channels, which brings us to Dolby Atmos. Dolby Atmos is the most current or latest iteration of surround sound formats, and it provides for a multitude of channels, including height, ceiling, 
effects channels. I mean, you name it. You can kind of go crazy with Dolby Atmos because it is a much more object or location-based surround sound setup as opposed to having, you know, discrete left, center, right, and surrounds kind of set in space the way that they used to do it with Dolby Digital or Dolby Surround. But yes, if you want the latest and the greatest in surround sound formats, Dolby Atmos is what you're looking for. Next, we are going to talk about loudspeakers, and all of this information will apply equally to both hi-fi and home theater users. Now, the first term that I want to get out of the way is the term of driver. Now, a driver's entire job is to reproduce a certain sound frequency. And so a tweeter is a driver aimed solely at reproducing the high frequencies, like drum cymbals, things like that. The mid-range driver's sole job is to reproduce the mid-range, or the human voice, if you will, whereas a bass driver or woofer, its entire job is to reproduce the lower octaves, say like a kick drum or an explosion in a movie. But there are exceptions to these rules. There are loudspeakers that have only one driver, and that driver's sole responsibility is to reproduce all of the sounds. And then there's some loudspeakers that have two drivers and they split the highs and the mids and bass between the two. And others use three or more drivers to split the sound up between multiple drivers even more. The point is, is that a driver, if you ever hear someone refer to a driver in a loudspeaker, either they're calling it a tweeter, mid-range, or bass driver, it's just the the transducer, the cone responsible for reproducing a certain sonic frequency. Now, all of the drivers combine to give a loudspeaker its frequency response. And frequency response refers to the sound frequencies that any loudspeaker can recreate, 20 hertz being the lowest of human perception and 20 kilohertz typically being the highest. And so when a speaker is rated 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, that means it's truly full range. It can play the lowest notes and the highest notes that most everyone can hear but there aren't a lot of loudspeakers that can do that on their own. And so you may see a loudspeaker that can play, say, down to 40 hertz up to 20 kilohertz because, well, low frequencies are incredibly difficult to play from just a single from just a single loudspeaker. And this is why subwoofers exist, so that they can reach down and play those lower octaves more easily because they're specialty. They're, they're designed specifically for those octaves. But again, frequency response, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, is roughly the range of human hearing in terms of sound frequencies. Spend any time around people that love loudspeakers and you're bound to hear the term crossover. And crossovers can be kind of a complicated concept to grapple with, so I'm gonna try and distill it down as simply as possible. A crossover is well, it's kind of a device that's located inside a loudspeaker that takes the incoming signal and then decides at what points to cross over or send the sound or signal to the individual drivers themselves. I wanna move into video because there are some basic video terms that also need to be covered because frankly, they're necessary when discussing home theater. The first term I wanna talk about is resolution. And resolution refers to nothing more than the number of pixels that your display, be it a flat panel TV or projector, is capable of displaying or reproducing. And this has changed over time. But you know, back in the day with tube televisions and things like that, it was SD or standard definition. Then we moved up to high definition. Then we went to ultra HD or 4K, and now the best of the best that we have available to us is 8K. Now, the most common right now is HD or Ultra HD, uh, 1080p or 4K, but 8K does exist out there for those of us lucky enough to maybe have the bank account to have something like that. But resolution, again, is only referring to the number of pixels your display is capable of reproducing. The next topic I wanna to talk about is upscaling. Now, we live in an era where display technology is actually a little bit ahead of where a lot of our programming stems from. That is to say that a lot of programming you may watch is in HD or high definition, whereas your television may be 4K. And all upscaling is, is processing inside your television that takes that HD signal and upscales it to the native resolution of your display, which in this case is 4K. 
An HDMI is a single cable connection that carries both an audio and video signal between your components. And it's really meant to give you the best possible connection, resolution, and performance out of any home theater system. So if you're looking to achieve the maximum resolution possible, the best sound quality possible, you're going to want to make sure that whatever component we're talking about is connected using an HDMI cable. And another nice thing about an HDMI cable is the presence of the audio return channel, meaning that HDMI cables can cross communicate. So if you like to stream media using the built-in apps on your television, it is possible to send their audio signal downstream through an HDMI cable to say your AV receiver so that you can enjoy all of the surround sound formats even though you are streaming locally from your display. And those are the basic hi-fi and home theater terms that I wanted to tackle in this particular video. I know it's a lot to get through. Believe me, it was a journey to get to this part in this video. And we're not even through everything yet. This is just what I thought would be the most beneficial at this stage. We will likely, likely have to make a few more videos like these in order to cover everything that you are likely going to encounter in your hi-fi and home theater journey. So that's it, everybody. Those are the basic hi-fi and home theater terms that I thought we would just get started with with this particular video. If there are topics that you would like me to cover in more detail, please do leave those suggestions for me down in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. If you're interested in some behind the scenes content, maybe consider becoming a member. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File and I think that's about it. Got to get out of here. So remember, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. So thank you so very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.